Thank you all very much. That's the best reception I've ever had. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. I know why you've come. Some of you have even got pictures. Absolutely fantastic. We can have a great rally tonight. We've got thousands of us here to show why Jeremy Corbyn is and will remain the leader of the Labour Party. Just before we get to, to Jeremy, there's a few people I'm going to introduce to you though. The first one is Steve Preddy from Unite the Union. Thank you, Bristol. Well, good evening. Thank you all for attending this evening. I know you've not come to listen to me, but I do think it's desperately important uh, that as many of us as possible get the message out that we are here to support Jeremy Corbyn. I address you as a representative of Britain's largest trade union, Unite, and we are very proud to be supporting Jeremy Corbyn in this leadership election. Of course, this is an election that should not be taking place. This is an election which is a distraction from the main purpose of the politics that we should be engaging in, which is tackling this dishonest, disreputable Conservative government on their policies and on their lack of principles. But the fact that we're distracted is solely down to dishonourable MPs in the Parliamentary Labour Party. But let's be clear, it is they that have made the mistake. Firstly, hoisted by their own petard in believing simply by raising concerns about Jeremy that they would replace him. Secondly, the arrogance, the absolute arrogance to think that a Labour leader the most highly elected, densely elected leader in Labour history could be replaced by the Parliamentary Labour Party against the democratic wishes of the mass movement of the Labour Party. What an insult. So what is the appeal? According to the mainstream media and the career politicians who service only themselves and those who sponsor them, we are a cult, a small band of Corbynistas, destined to seek only protest status should Jeremy win the election, and he will. No. What they fail to grasp is the substance of the message that Jeremy Corbyn has come to represent. That is what is appealing, and that is precisely why historic Labour supporters, turned away by its flirtation with neoliberalism, over decades have returned. It is also the reason why tens of thousands of people like tonight come in their free time to listen to Jeremy Corbyn. No other politician in this country would command that level of respect. And it is precisely why it is precisely why the Labour Party has now grown to the largest social media me uh, movement in this country, 600,000 strong. Absolutely remarkable. And the other thing they forget, Jeremy Corbyn is a decent, honest human being. Almost unique in public life, certainly in political life. And despite the worst efforts of the media and other political parties, people in increasing numbers have come to understand that far from being some kind of fringe lefty, Jeremy Corbyn represents the hopes and needs of the majority of people in this country. So why? In Britain today, there is a chronic housing shortage. People are unable to get onto the property ladder and we have shameful levels of homelessness. Well, I'll come to that. <laughs> Britain needs a radical home building programme, including access to large scale affordable housing. In Britain today, following years of austerity, our public services, despite the very best efforts of the wonderful people who work in them, 
are in crisis. We have a government hell-bent on dismantling our beloved health service and including an unprecedented attack on our junior doctors. In education, the government obsesses with endless political examinations and experiments while seeking to demonise those dedicated to enriching our children's lives. In Britain today, we have business leaders and bankers committing willful acts against the general public and their employees, which in any other sphere of life would see equivalent crimes dealt with through the courts and many facing imprisonment, as we're seeing in Iceland and as we're now seeing in Ireland. Yeah. We have the speculative behaviour of reckless bankers causing the financial meltdown of the finance and banking sectors and subsequent worldwide recession, which we've still not recovered from. The recent revelations around Philip Green and the ransacking of employers' pension funds is not the first time. And of course, I'm proud to say that Unite was front and centre in publicly exposing the shameful acts in Sports Direct. When our employees forced to work zero hour contracts, people timed while they went to the toilet, paid below the legal minimum wage, and the disgrace of a woman giving birth to a child in a warehouse toilet. That is Britain today. These are just a small number of the examples that reflect the gross imbalance of our society and across the industrial landscape of our country. And of course our detractors will say, how are we going to pay for all this? And I would say, how are we, as one of the wealthiest countries in the world, still, still claiming not to be able to afford to do things and then claim that Britain is a fair society? We can't. In our vision of Britain in the future with Jeremy Corbyn as Prime Minister, we have a Labour government providing homes built for the many based on need and providing affordable rather than investment opportunity for the few. Fair and balanced employment rights, providing protection for the many, restoring rights to trade union members and in so doing creating a countermeasure to the worst excesses of any unscrupulous employers. Our National Health Service, operating under original time timeless principles, are being free for all and based on the need where staff are valued and respected for the care and professionalism that they provide. We would have a country where care for the elderly and infirm members of our society are provided with the dignity that they deserve. And that's particularly true in Bristol. We have seen some shameful examples in recent years of extremely poor care being provided to the elderly and the infirm. And for that care to be provided, very importantly, by people who are paid fair wages, fair terms and conditions, as they provide the dedicated care our loved ones and our family members deserve. An education provided free for everyone, for life, and ending the disgrace of student loans. and many more that you'll hear that people are warming to the honest and decent politics that our Labour Party under Jeremy Corbyn can provide. In finality, no speech in Bristol would be complete without my mentioning our greatest politician, Tony Benn. In an interview, he was once asked about socially just policies, how we, we as a country could afford it. And he replied, at the time of the Iraq war. If we can find the money to kill people, then we can find the money to care for people. Yeah. Yeah. Tony then also said, I think there are two ways in which people are controlled in this country. First, they will seek to frighten people. And secondly, they will seek to demoralize them. We have seen countless examples by people in the media and sadly even some in our own Labour Party trying to frighten us in support of Jeremy Corbyn and we've also seen and witnessed shocking efforts to demoralise us. But our detractors will fail and they will fail not just because we support Jeremy Corbyn but because of the values we all share and that Jeremy represents. And that is why together we will re-elect Jeremy Corbyn first as Labour leader and then Prime Minister. Thank you. Thank you.
received wise words from United the Union there. And uh, by the way, if any of you out there are working and you're not in a union, go join a union and go join the Labour Party if you're not in it.